Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to help the channel grow, of course. Now we are doing great here because we can add items to this, but we want to be able to change the quantities uh, directly here, uh, which would be good. And then we can do a clear all as well, which would be awesome. But let's start with uh, this. Actually, let's start with the clear all. Clear all is easy to do. We can clear all these items without a problem. So let's see how we can do that. So we just need an event listener here and we can do it the direct way because I don't want to add too much code. So let's just add the only click right here. So on click we'll say clear all. Oh, that would be the name of the function. We don't really need to supply anything to this function because all we are doing is emptying this uh, this array and that's it. So with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead mm -hmm, uh, and create that function, clear all. So down here, let's just put that here. Let's say function uh, clear underscore all like this. I'm trying to keep this send data at the very end. That's why I'm putting functions between it. Okay, now we just don't want to clear things. We want to ask a question. So I'm just going to put, the way we ask a question is by putting the word confirm. You know, I always can't tell if it's M or N. I think it's M. So say confirm and say, are you sure you want to clear all items? in the list double question mark double exclamation point okay so confirm returns true or false because it has a okay and cancel button so if you press cancel then it returns false if you press okay it returns true so you can just say if confirm because if it returns true then if true is going to be true so in that case um, if we do not confirm we want to exit this so let's say return like that now this will happen when we say okay so let's put an exclamation point to only return or exit when we say no so if however we don't say no then the function will continue and so we're just going to say um, uh, items right is equal to an empty array so we are emptying everything from there and what we need to do desperately is to refresh the items in the list. Otherwise, we won't have a visual cue to see what has happened. So simple and straightforward. So let's refresh here. And of course, I am going to add a few items and then click the clear button, clear. So since it's not working, must be something wrong. So let's go to the console and see confirm is not defined. Right, so it's actually N and not M. Ugh, spellings, yeah? Okay, so let's go there. And I'm going to click on clear. Ah, oh, there we go. Are you sure you want to clear all items in the list? Yes, yes. Let's cancel first. So we, it remains. But let's say okay, and everything just appears. The number is zero. We are back to normal and then we can start our fresh or you can start a sour if you want <laughs> anyway so let's see if we can add a similar thing for uh, adding quantities here real quick now for us to add quantities we need two things we need to know the index of the quantity we are adding so we can refresh it in the items list and also we need to know um, Wait, what else do we need? Well, we need to know whether we're going up or down, I guess. And then we need to make sure that we can't put a negative number here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because somebody could do that, actually. So let me try this. Somebody could put a negative number here, yes. So let's make these guys read only. But before we do that, let's make sure that... Um, 
actually maybe read only is not a good idea somebody could should be able to click in here and actually add a number of their choice now i just don't want them to add a negative value or if they do it should convert that to an absolute value okay so what i want to see is i'm going to do an alert for a number so alert 10 like so i want to see if there's a function that can convert a a negative to a positive so there it shows me 10 okay but what if i do abs like this is that a valid function i just want to know okay so it doesn't seem to be valid if we go to the console we see abs is not defined so maybe it's math capital m dot abs let's see if that works ah there we go so it shows me a 10 now i want to try and put a minus so that it's minus 10 and refresh and it still gives me 10 you see if i remove the maths dot abs it will show me a minus 10 i'm sure and there we go okay so abs is for absolute value so math.abs is our friend in this situation okay so what we'll do here is let's add some event listeners now adding event listeners here is a little bit tough not really though i think we can add directly to this by just going to the items html and right here where we have this input where are the uh, it's the span this one and that one these are the actual things actually the buttons are the no let me add it on these guys and then i'll use the current target in this case okay so let me show you something here um i'll put an on click on click and then what i'll say is um i don't know what i'll call these functions quantity up and quantity down right up and down like that so you can call them increase quantity or reduce quantity that's up to you but let's apply an event there so this will work as well still so quantity up quantity down now these are two functions yeah which is not very efficient so instead what we can do is we can just say change quantity like so so that we have exactly the same um, function but we tell it what to do in this case so here i'll put a quotes and comma and this one will be up and the other one will be down okay great so we're just applying a value into the function called up and another value called down that way we know that we are clicking up or clicking down we still need the event so let's leave that there but the function is change quantity so if let's go down here to the function so let's say function change quantity and we expect the direction here so we'll call it direction and then we expect an event so we just call the event e okay so now if i do an alert here uh like so an alert uh, with the direction i'm going to have that but what i really want uh, okay let's try that before we go any further so if i click you see down i click up so they are quite opposite so what i would do is go back and change them so this one should be down the other one should be up like so very good okay so we know that that works up and down but let's get the e dot target e dot target here So if I click on this and click on that, you see the e dot target is a span element, right? That's okay. But if I click on the the other, uh, what's this? Uh, the icon itself, it says object element, right? This one 
span element, right? If I click on the box, that's a span. But if I happen to click on the icon itself, it's different. So what's happening here, you can see this if I use a console.log instead. That would be much clearer, console.log. And let's view this in the console. So refresh and inspect. Let's go to the console. As you can see, oh, let me add an item. So if I click here, you can see clearly this is a span, right? But if I click on an icon, it's the i tag. So this is unpredictable because we won't know what the user will click here. They'll just think this whole button is one thing and not separate items. So what we need instead is to use current target. Current target will always just give you the item that has the event listener itself. So let's add that and let's click on this. I get the span, click on the icon. Every time I get the span. So that's more consistent and that's good. So on this span itself, we can add an ID. That way we can know where we are at, what item we are changing at that point. So in this case, what I would do is on the on click listener behind it, I'll just add an index as we have done before and then say is equal to put a dollar sign like that and say data dot. Yeah, no, actually we should have just an index value right here as it is here. I'll put an index over there as we have done in previous examples. So I'll just find where I have used this to make sure that I supply the required index, which is the I over there. So comma I, that's it. That way I know the index of it in the items uh, function. Okay, so here we'll say um, bar index is equal to so e dot current target dot get attribute and this attribute is called index like that. So once we get that index, then we can use it to determine where to change. So let's see uh, if a direction is equal to up like this, right? If direction is up, what I will do is I will say uh, items dot. Okay, so items uh, index. Okay, dot uh, quantity is equal to actually we'll say plus equals one. Okay, great, great, great. And um, what else? Mm, we'll do an else, of course, that's the what else. And then here we'll subtract it. So minus equals one. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, we don't want negative values. So we want to limit it at one, right? So here we're going to just copy this and check to see what the result is. I'll say if dot quantity is less than one, right? For as long as it's less than one, then let's set the same amount to be equal to one like that. Okay. Make sure it's not less than one. And then once we do all this, of course, you will guess what we need to do now is refresh the items display. That's really it, right? Let me close that and refresh. So if I add an item and click on that, you see the number is increasing, the quantity is increasing, everybody is happy. Okay, very good. Click on the next one. It knows exactly which item to increase and reduce. So it doesn't go below one and it goes to infinity on the other side, but not below one. Very good. But a user can still type in a number like this and when they leave, it should update as well. 
So because if I click plus from the 100, it goes to 2. Uh, it was 200 like that, but if I click, click plus, it goes to 3. So this is not uh, a very useful feature at all. So instead, what I will do is uh, I will add an event on the blur of this one. So when this gets a focus like this, this is on focus. That's the event. Once I click inside it, it's got focus. So that's the on focus. When I leave that thing, it's on blur. So what I will do is simply go to the on blur and blur. So here what I'll do is I'll get the same index and put it here. Okay, that way we know where we are. And then of course I will put an on blur event like this. Like I told you, if you check, just click on in the HTML section and you can check all the events that are available and you can all test those. So change quantity in this case. Um, I think let's use the same thing, the same function. It's much, it's always much easier to do that. And then this one, instead of down or up, this one we can call it, um, what can we call this one? It's a direct input, so let's just call it input. You can call it anything. It's entirely up to you what terminologies you want to use here. So this one, the direction is up. And then there's an else here, but instead of just putting an else, let me duplicate this and uh, let's put an else if. So I'll do this and do that and say else if direction is down like that. Okay, and this is what we do if the direction is down. However, there's an else which is input or whatever it is that you've decided. And this one, we just say in items index quantity is equal to, and we're going to get the value of this item. So I'll say e dot current target. Okay, so here we're going to say the quantity is equal to, so it's not plus equals or minus equals, we're just going to say is equal to e dot current target dot value. That's it. Okay very good now i want this to be an integer right so i can do something like parse int like so this will make sure it's an integer uh, because we don't want um, decimals in there for quantity right mm -hmm. so it's always an integer and then you to check if it's zero blah 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 the list goes on so let's try this and i'll click here yeah. this works still let me put 500 and if i leave that you see it has updated the value 500 times 10 that's 5000 so if i click there it goes to 5001 if i say 300 like so once i leave it's updated so i can click there and put 10 there and click there and it is updated accordingly Okay, so great, uh, looking good so far. Everything seems to be working except the checkout button. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then there was a suspend or is it pause or something button here. We can easily add that as well. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.